Hey there, Iggy the Investing Iguana here. Today, we're going to talk about a significant event in Singapore's political landscape and how it might impact the country's economy. So, buckle up and let's dive right in. Prime Minister Lee Shin Long has announced that he will be handing over the reins of leadership to Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong before the next general election. This is a significant moment in Singapore's political history, marking a transition of power and potentially setting the stage for new policies and directions for the country. Now, you might be wondering, Iggy, how does this affect Singapore's economy? Well, that's a great question. Let's break it down. On a fine Sunday, November 5th, Prime Minister Lee Shin Long of Singapore spilled the beans about passing the leadership baton to Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong a much-anticipated move slated to happen before the next general election due by November 2025. Diving deeper into the People's Action Party's PAP game plan during the annual PAP Awards and Convention, Mr. Lee, the party's head honcho, shared that the handover could potentially align with PAP's 70th anniversary on November 21st next year. This insight came amidst a series of speeches by Mr. Wong, Deputy Prime Minister Hang Sui Kiet, and a fresh crop of PAP members at the Singapore Expo. The wheels of transition began to spin when Mr. Wong got the nod as the leader of the party's fourth generation, or the 4G team, after the 62-year-old Mr. Hung made way for younger blood. Mr. Lee, who was keen on stepping down before his 70th birthday in February 2022, saw his plans thwarted by the pandemic. Flash forward to this year's National Day rally, Mr. Lee, buoyed by the retreat of COVID-19, confirmed that the succession roadmap was back on the drawing board. The recent hullabaloo around ministers and members of parliament wouldn't hit the pause button on the political refresh, he emphasized. Mr. Lee, who celebrated his 71st birthday this year, didn't manage to pass the torch by his 70th birthday as initially desired. Yet, if all sails smoothly, the handover might coincide with Pap's 70th birthday bash, a symbolic passing of the torch, albeit on a different birthday. But the narrative doesn't end with just a leadership change. Mr. Lee underscored the essence of gearing up well for the elections, a hallmark of not only good governance but ensuring the party remains unblemished and robust. He pointed out the evolving expectations of Singaporeans, who now yearn for more from the government. Interestingly, while many desire a stronger opposition presence in the parliament, the consensus remains firmly in favor of PAP helming the governance. Even opposition parties, Mr. Lee mused, seem to share this sentiment. This unique political conundrum, where a significant chunk of voters want PAP at the helm but also wish for a stronger opposition, reflects a fascinating dynamic as Singapore navigates through its political waters. As the political landscape in Singapore sees a rise in the number of opposition MPs, the tempo of discussions within the parliamentary walls has notably amplified. Mr. Lee observed that the agora of parliament now buzzes longer with debates. He acknowledged the merit in constructive political discourse, recognizing it as a vessel of change and betterment. However, he pointed out a recurring pattern where these debates morph into a political tug-of-war, with the opposition often aiming to rack up brownie points. Mr. Lee shared, the narrative usually follows a script the government outlines its stance, spelling out the limitations and explaining why the opposition's suggestions might hit a wall. And like a well-rehearsed play, the cycle repeats. He reflected that while this dynamic is part of the parliamentary democracy's design, there's a thin line. If crossed, the energy invested in political one-upmanship could overshadow the focus on national concerns, leaving the crux of issues untouched. The ripple effect could be a fragmented society, with both Singapore and its citizens bearing the brunt. Hence, I argue that a larger opposition presence doesn't necessarily equate to improved governance, he added. Drawing parallels with nations boasting mature democracies like the U.S., Mr. Lee warned of the creeping polarization in politics, hinting at a similar potential scenario in Singapore. He stressed the need for the People's Action Party, PAP, to double down on clarifying the stakes to Singaporeans. Having navigated the governmental helm for nearly four decades, let me be frank, the luxury of a long-term vision of adopting stringent yet crucial policies comes from a place of political stability, 
Not having to incessantly fret over the pendulum swing of the next elections, Mr. Lee emphasized. He continued, the Singapore we see today wasn't sculpted by a faltering government clinging to power by a thread, nor by a kaleidoscope of policies and governing parties reshuffling post every election. Mr. Lee did not shy away from acknowledging the perpetual possibility of the PAP's ruling position being contested. He noted that the political rhythm would undoubtedly shift if a significant slice of the populist desires a stronger opposition check, ushering more opposition MPs into the Parliament's halls. He also highlighted the opposition's stance of not aiming to form the next government as conveyed to the voters. Yet, when the dice of destiny rolls with each election, the voters must weigh their choices heavily, Mr. Lee remarked, urging them to side with the party they believe can weave a cohesive social tapestry and carve out a Singapore that not only cradles the dreams of the present generation but also stands firm for the ones to follow. As he neared the end of his address, a wave of emotion swept over Mr. Lee. With a voice tinged with earnestness, he shared that dedicating his life to the service of the nation has been both his grand privilege and honor. So, how does this transition of Prime Minister affect Singapore's economy? Firstly, it's important to understand that political leadership plays a crucial role in shaping a country's economic policies. The direction set by the leader can influence everything from trade relations to fiscal policies and even the overall business environment. In the case of DPM Lawrence Wong, he has been serving in the government for many years and has taken on greater responsibilities. He has shown a strong commitment to economic growth, emphasizing that it is a non-negotiable aspect of Singapore's economic policy. He has also stressed the importance of inclusivity, indicating a balanced approach to economic development. Moreover, DPM Wong has expressed his readiness to take on the leadership role and has received full confidence from PM Lee and other ministers. This smooth transition of power is likely to ensure stability, which is a key factor that investors look for. Furthermore, DPM Wong has spoken about the need for Singapore to pursue a twin strategy of staying open and developing locally to continue thriving. This suggests a continued commitment to globalization, which has been a significant driver of Singapore's economic success, while also focusing on local development. However, it's also worth noting that any transition of power comes with a degree of uncertainty. While the broad strokes of Singapore's economic policy are unlikely to change drastically, there may be shifts in focus or new initiatives introduced under DPM Wong's leadership. These could have implications for various sectors of the economy. In conclusion, while it's too early to predict the exact impact of this leadership transition on Singapore's economy, the indications are that the country will continue on its path of pro-growth and inclusive economic policies. As always, it will be important to keep an eye on the developments and adjust our investment strategies accordingly. That's all for today, folks. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights from your favorite investing iguana. Until next time, keep investing smart.